This video starts the discussion on attributed grammars. Just like its name imply, this is grammar that has attributes. But why do we need this type of grammar? This is because most programming languages construct today cannot be adequately described by context-free grammar, also known as LL1 grammar that we have discussed before. For example, if we have a loop control variable, like our for statement. So if we have something like this, i is less than 5i plus plus, and then we have curly braces with statement. The value of i must not be changed inside this scope. But currently, our LL1 grammar or context-free grammar does not have the capability to do this. Additionally, we also do not have a mechanism to pass values from one branch to a, of attributed tree to another. Therefore, to handle situations such as above, we further extend our grammar by introducing attributed grammar. Attributed grammar can be described as context-free grammar that has been extended to provide context-sensitive information by appending attributes to some of its terminal and non-terminals. The main difference in attributed grammar is the terminal and non-terminal inside the grammar can have attributes in the form of subscripts, which is smaller fonts next to these symbols. Each of the grammar rules may also have attributed computation rules and these rules show how we assign values to attributes when the rule is being parsed. In order to understand how attributed grammar works, we build derivation trees and then we follow these steps. First, we ignore all attributes when building the tree. Second, we enter attribute values into the tree using the attribute computation rules. And third, we pass the values in two ways. First, from the child node to parent, and we call this synthesized attribute. And second, from parent node to child, and we call this inherited attributes. Let's demonstrate attributed grammar by building the tree for this expression plus times 3, 4, plus 5, 6. So this is a prefix expression. I'm going to build the tree for this using grammar 19. Okay, just like all other uh, attributed derivation tree, we're going to start with our starting non-terminal. But since all three rules of grammar 19 starts from non-terminal expression, we're going to look at this symbol one by one. So currently we're trying to draw the tree for the symbol plus and the rule that has plus as its slash and set is rule one so let's start with rule one expression can be derived to plus expression expression so what when we start drawing the tree we can ignore the um, attributes of q and r so if you see here i'm not putting the values of the attributes yet. Okay, moving on, we want to draw times or multiplication under uh, the, this expression over here. Therefore, uh, I'm going to apply rule number two. So, rule number two is times expression expression so the second input is done. Moving on, the third input is number three. Number three is a numeric constant. Therefore, we will be applying rule three. So expression can be derived to constant. This constant has the value of three or the attribute of three. Therefore, we will put the value of three or the attribute of three as a subscript to the uh, terminal constant. Okay, moving on. 
uh, we are done with three next we want to move to the next input which is four again this is implementing the third rule constant with the attribute of four so this is done next moving on we need to write plus so plus it means we will apply rule number one so here i apply plus expression expression so this is done and then five this is another implementation of the third rule constant with the value of five and finally uh, the final input is sixth and this is also an implementation of rule three and it has the attribute of sixth so we are done with the first step in the second step uh, we need to uh, synthesize or um, figure out the attributes based on attribute computation rule and we need to do this from left to right and from bottom to top so i'm going to start with this value here because this value is our leftmost uh, terminal with attribute and it is the uh, attribute uh, it is the symbol or terminal at the bottom of the tree okay so if you look here this was an implementation of rule 3 so if you look at the attribute computation rule of rule 3 it says that p should get the value of q we know the value of q it is 3 since p will get the same value we can write 3 as the value of p okay so we are following this attribute computation rule so i'm going to replicate this same thing to all the branches that apply rule 3 so since this is 4 this will get the value of 4 this gets the value of 5 and this gets the value of 6 okay so what we did we are implementing this attribute computation rule for rule 3 since all of these branches are implementing rule 3 okay now we go one step or one level up and we, we are looking at this particular branch okay so now in this particular branch of the tree this is implementing rule number two okay so we know the value of q which is 3 this is q and we know the value of r which is 4 so this is r now we need to figure out what is the value of p we refer to the attribute computation rule and it says that p gets the value of q times r because our q is 3 and our r is 4 our p is 3 times 4 which is 12 so we put the attribute of 12 here okay let's move to the branch next to it so this particular branch so for this particular branch it is actually implementing rule number one so this particular rule 
So we know the value of Q, which is 5. We know the value of R, which is 6. And we look at the attribute computation rule. The attribute computation rule says P should get the value of Q plus R. Since our Q is 5 and our R is 6, 5 plus 6 is 11. Therefore, P gets the attribute of 11. And finally, we go another level up and we are looking at this branch. And in this branch, it is implementing rule number one. So we are looking at this rule. We know the value of Q. The value of Q is 12 and the value of R is 11. And the attribute computation rule says that P gets the value of Q plus R. Therefore, P here will get the value of 12 plus 11, which is 23. And this is how you synthesize the value of the attributes from the lower part of the derivation tree to up. So what we did just now, we are synthesizing the values of these attributes from the attributes on the lower part of the derivation tree. And this is what we call synthesized attribute. Another way of passing values using attributed grammar is by inheriting them from the upper part of derivation tree. Um, in our slide, in our screen, we can see grammar 20 and we are going to construct an attributed derivation tree for grammar 20, uh, using grammar 20 for this particular input string. So we're going to start with the uh, starting on terminal. So declaration can be derived to type and var list. And this type can be directly assigned the attribute of integer and then um, this is done we move on to a so var list there are two rules derived from var list rule number two and rule number three since um, we are drawing we need to draw for a minus b minus c we cannot choose rule number three because um, this will only allow us to declare a single integer uh, and we need to declare three integers at the same time. Therefore, I'm going to apply the second rule, var list, comma, ident. Okay. Again, we haven't write A yet. And here in var list, we need to choose between rule 2 and rule 3. If we choose rule 3, we manage to declare two integers only. And since we want to declare three integers. Here is another implementation of rule number two. So this will be var list comma ident. Okay. And finally, uh, we can derive this var list to ident and apply the attribute of A. Okay. So this is done. And then uh, if you see, minus is already inside here. So we move to the next input, which is B. So we apply the attribute of B here. So this is done. And then, uh, I'm sorry, not minus, but comma. So comma is already in the tree. So this is done. And we move to the next input string, which is C. Our tree is only halfway done. This is because we still haven't write the attributes of V. So in order for us to do that, we need to look at the top of the tree. So uh, let's look at this particular branch. So this branch is implementation of rule number one. And it says that um, type T 
we do not know uh, sorry type t has the attribute of integer and we do not know yet the value or the attribute of v but if you look at the attribute computation rule it says that v gets the value of t and since our t is integer therefore our var list will get the attribute of integer 2 okay now moving on to the second rule in the second rule is this rule and we currently knows the value of x we knows the value of x which is c uh, we do not uh, we also knows the value of v which is int we do not know the value of w but if you look at the attribute computation rule it says that w gets the value of v therefore since our v is integer our w will also be integer and this will also be replicated here since this is also an implementation of rule number two and we know the value of v which is integer here therefore the value of w here will get the value of i and t so if you noticed we are inheriting the value of i and t from the top of the at computation sorry the top of the attributed derivation tree and we inherit it here and here and here so this is a type of inherited attributes where the attribute values are taken from the higher nodes in the tree when we are writing the recursive descent parcel for attributed grammar the way that it is written is that the attributes will be implemented as parameters or variables in the methods defining non-terminals so for example if we have this in the grammar where s is a non-terminal with two attributes a and also b therefore the method s will have two parameters a and also b so this is an example of a method for non-terminal s so we if we have this rule s can be derived to a a b where the attributes are p for s r for a and s for b this is how the method will be written so we define the method or we initialize the method s and we pass the value of p and then if input equals to a since the selection set is a uh, input equals to next input or we just read the next input and then uh, we meet a we handle um, non-terminal by calling for the method of that non-terminal and since uh, the rule has r as its attribute we call the method of a by passing the value of r same goes for this uh, since b has the attribute of s we call the method of b and we pass the attribute of s and this is how you construct or you write a recursive descent parser for attributed grammar